All right, guys, we're going to be doing a new project on this boat. Uh, I'm going to be replacing all the gauges here on the console. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is this, these gauges are starting to, these main gauges are starting to flake underneath. And as you can see, there's some scratches on the surface as well. Not really a big deal. They're still functional. Uh, again, it's just sort of a, uh, just looks a little ugly. Um, but the other reason I'm doing that is I'm going to combine the hour gauge, the hour um, meter, into the speed into the tachometer. This Fargo has got a the new the new uh, series that I that I have. It's the same series. I'm sorry, it's the Chesapeake series, but a white background. Um, but it has an hour meter here in the bottom, and that'll open up a slot, and I can put a voltmeter here at the at, at where the hour meter currently is. So. Um, the tachometer is a little tricky. Uh, you've got to, to do some things with a signal generator to make this tachometer engage. And I've got all that on my bench and I'll show you that. Um, and for the hours to count up properly and I'm gonna match what's on my motor. Um, currently my motor's got around 471 hours. I'll double check that with the uh, computer again. But uh, um, in any case, it's going to take a little bit of time to get this tachometer squared away and, and up to the amount of hours that I need it to count to. Uh, but the rest of the gauges are going to be fairly simple. Um, the t the um, trim gauge is going to be, again, it's a Honda-specific trim gauge. Uh, the speedometer is going to be a little different. I'm going to go with the GPS uh, model of the uh, uh, speedometer. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. I did some testing in my truck and drove around the neighborhood just to see uh, what it would do and how it would respond and act uh, and it's pretty accurate so um, I'll show you what that looks like on the bench as well as uh, some of the testing I did in my truck and of course fuel gauge I'm also replacing that uh, with a Faria gauge again all this same model same brand um, same series so um, so I want to pull this panel I've already got the screws out I'm pull the panel and show that show you what it looks like I'm also going to show you uh, I'll put the meter on the um, the tachometer to show you the signal that's that comes from the motor that drives this uh, tachometer to make the, the tachometer engage. So a certain signal, a certain frequency that you've got to run this on to make the, the gauge and uh, make the tachometer engage. And we, to make those hours count up, you've got to have it count up over or have the gauge run up over uh, 500 RPM. So I'll show you what that looks like. And uh, we'll do a little testing here on the boat and then we'll go over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm doing there. All right, so we got our I uh, got our meter out here, signal generator slash counter and meter. And I've got it hooked up to the tachometer, to the signal post, and um, the positive to the signal post, negative to the negative post, of course. Um, and of course, this is the input that leads to the input, and it's counting up at my at idle, looking at that signal is about 25 hertz, 24, 25 hertz. That's, that's what we need. We need something above 500 RPMs. So that gets us right there. And then what will, ha what will happen is the new gauge will then start counting hours. So the hour meter counts up so we can get it up to uh, match what's on the motor itself. So again, as you run the motor up, the RPMs go up, of course, and the frequency goes up. We'll do that real quick. I'll show you what that looks like. RPMs. And we're looking at, let's see if we can get a good clear picture of that in the sunlight here. 62 hertz, 61 hertz, somewhere in there. Yeah. So again, just showing you, giving you a little demo there of what that does. Um, coming from the motor, the signal that sends to the uh, tachometer, so the tachometer actually functions. The other thing you've got to note is uh, the setting on the back of the tachometer to make sure that you have it set to the right setting based on the pole, the number of poles your motor is designed for. And this is a four pole motor. As you see, the setting is set to number one. I'll show you that on the bench. I'll ha I have the little instruction sheet. It came with the gauges so you can see what that looks like. But in any case, just using what we've already got here, the setting is is number one so we've got ours on the bench set to number one as well as we got everything hooked up on the bench here that's the uh, the new tack and as I said it's got the hour meter built into it um, and the model number for that is three three eight four zero 
really can't see the model number in there because of the uh, a little bit there. Uh, the model number for this GPS speedometer is 33839. You can see that down there. Uh, the model number for this, this is the Honda trim meter, is 13889. And it's a little harder, harder to read. Uh, this is the voltmeter, it's 13805. And the fuel gauge is um, 13801. So uh, I've already tested out my fuel gauge and on my fuel tanks, and it works perfectly. So that's going to be a great thing. Again, it, again, the sender, different senders do different things. So I just wanted to make sure that this meter did. Uh, this gauge did work with my my current fuel um, tank senders and they do uh, so that'll work out just fine and the current gauge that's on the boat now is already a faria gauge um, so i know this is going to be a direct replacement so there's no worries there and of course this is just basic stuff there for the voltmeter um, and this here should be a fairly easy drop-in replacement as well again i'm just going to eliminate or disconnect the, the pitot tube or the little water pressure tube and just let it sit in there and I'll just cap it off so there's no water that uh, flows into the console. And then back over to the tachometer, I told you I was gonna show you what it looks like um, as far as the instruction sheet goes here and about the poles. And again, different model numbers, different model motors, different types of motors and the models of those motors have different poles. Um, and then again, this specifically for the Honda 90 and 75, it's a four pole motor. So you just go down here to the little, little cheat sheet here, a little, it's also on the back side of the, um, the gauge. So uh, for a 7,000 RPM uh, gauge, you've got a, the um, switch setting number one for a four pole uh, motor. So, so that makes it easy. Uh, and again, I just verify that on the, on the gauge that's already in the boat, so that makes it easy. Um, so I've already got all that sort of already set up on the, on the here already, it's already set to a one. I've got um, power applied on my bench power supply here, running 12 volts. Also applied, I've already hooked up the leads. Um, again, now we're going to create and generate signal using channel one here on my signal generator. Um, and that's going to simulate the motor running. Right now I've got it set to all zeros for my signal. I've got my amplitude set to 12 volts. And it's all zeros here, so there's no frequency being sent. And of course, that's why the the um, gauge is not, uh, the tachometer is not engaged. So I've already got the cursor, as you see the little red dot there, it's on the uh, first um, spot there on, for the, for the, to count the frequencies. We're gonna turn that up. And as I turn that up, you'll see it start to engage. But as you see down here, there's a little hourglass, it's not blinking. The hourglass has to blink for it to start counting hours. So I've already got 192 hours on there that I've been doing it for quite a few days here. Um, so as I count that up, and now that we've got it up to 20 hertz, it starts to count. Again, we're above 500 RPMs, and the hour, little hourglass starts to blink, and that means it's counting hours. So as we turn this up, as I was showing you on the boat, as we turn this up, the more we turn it up, the more it counts up, of course, the, the, the more the, uh, the, the tachometer engages. So that's 70 hertz, it's a little over 2,000 RPMs. So um, that's how that works. So we're just going to let this run. Again, I've already run it, run it for many days, and, and we'll let this run up to, uh, again, last time I checked the motor, we were at 471. I'll put the computer back on the boat, on the motor, the, the ECM, and, and do another uh, test or another check to see um, what those hours specifically are. So I make sure that my hours match exactly what is on the motor. So uh, the boat has about five hours off the, the current meter on the boat. Hour meter on the boat is about five hours less than what's actually on the motor. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna make this uh, way more accurate and get that right to where the amount of hours it's on the, the motor. So I've got this Faria GPS speedometer connected and set it, setting in my truck so we can do a, a little preliminary test and I've got it here with my with uh, 12 volts from my um, cigarette lighter and uh, everything's hooked up and ready to go so here we're going to power it up I'm going to plug it in and power it up and you're, you're going to see it go through a power cycle or a test cycle there it goes makes 
quite a bit of noise actually. And then jumps up to five miles an hour, a little over, over five miles an hour while it acquires a signal, GPS signal. So it usually takes about a minute, maybe less. However, if you do start moving without it acquiring a signal, it'll take quite a bit longer to acquire that um, satellite signal. So let's keep that in mind. So let's see, it's been about 30 seconds. There we go, so there you go. So as you can hear it kind of jumping around there, it just it, it definitely makes noise, quite a bit of noise actually, and, and jumps around in little increments. So you just can, just so you can uh, see that and hear that, something to consider. All right, so we'll get going here and we'll see how this thing does. We won't go very fast because I'm in my neighborhood, so um, we'll keep it under 20. Just so you can see what that looks like. We're going to go down a hill here. So we're right, ar right around 20. Yeah, so it's about 2021. 20, Not that a truck has a great speedometer as well but um we get in the boat we'll do a little more testing with it with the gps um the garmin gps so we can see compare speedometer reading here as well on the uh boat gps so you can see that we'll stop here Again, it makes quite a bit of noise. I was surprised. It jumps around a little bit, but anyway, that's what it does. This, again, this is just a preliminary test before I put it in the boat. Got the motor hooked up here to my onboard diagnostic tool. Uh, that's the company Heel Tech, um, and that's the part number. And good little tool. Uh, I bought this after my last maintenance, uh, just because I had some issues with my, with you know, of course I went through that with on my on the motor uh, with the you know, flooding and that sort of thing. And I wanted to make sure there wasn't any fault codes and there are not fault codes. So that was all good, but uh, double checking everything. And, and it's a nice little tool to have. Uh, but in any case, I, I want to make sure that my hours are going to match up to what I'm going to have on my hour meter on the uh, console. And as you see here, I'm taking out the uh, actual dashboard console panel. And I've got it on the bench, and I'm doing a rewire while I'm doing the while I'm doing the gauges. I've, I decided I was going to go ahead and do a rewire. So I'll show you what that looks like. But basically, we're shooting for 472, and I've got 471 on there now, which is where I stopped. And I got one more hour to go, and then I will uh, be ready to put this back in the boat. So that's where we're at with this. All right, guys, we are ready to go. 472.0, which is exactly what we were showing on the motor. I've already disconnected the signal generator, so it's not counting hours. As you see, the little hourglass there has stopped moving, so we're not counting hours right now. I did want to go over the panel a little bit with you about what I've done. Um, basically, I've completely redone the whole entire panel, including all the wiring underneath, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I've installed new switches and breakers. <clears throat> I also made sure that when I, when I put these gauges in, as you see in this particular panel, sort of a design flaw in my opinion, there's some recessed areas and this beveled area. And what that does is it collects water. If it rains or any salt water or salt mist sits down in there and can potentially leak through um, and uh, get your gauges wet underneath as well as the wiring. So um, in my opinion, that's a horrible idea only because water just won't run off the front and down, in, you know, down into the boat, it actually will puddle up down in here and uh, cause some leakage if you're not careful and you don't seal it properly. So to seal um, these gauges as well as the switches and, and the uh, reset breakers here, um, I use a product um, called Elastomeric Marine Sealant by Sudbury. And that product is the best thing to use for HDPE type plastics. So this is like a starboard ropalene plastic um, that is what I've found to be able to stick the, stick the best on this type of surface. 
um, in this type of plastic, as well as give you a nice little rubbery seal. It doesn't necessarily harden up, but it gives you, it does stick to the plastic and it does give you a rubbery seal. So that's the best thing I've found. So this thing, in any case, this thing is ready to go. Um, I've already got everything wired in. It's ready to go. As you see, everything's blue. And the lights I ordered, or sorry, these the switches I ordered from a company called um, New Wire Marine, as well as the breakers. And they are, they came in blue. I ordered the blue version. There's a red version and a white version. I just ordered the blue version. And I also changed the LEDs out in um, all of these, these uh, gauges as well, as you see. Uh, to make everything match so everything's good to go um, last thing is I will tell you that um, when this thing's running including all the gauges are running and the lights it's a very very low amp draw you're looking at less than a half an amp so just uh, in case anybody was curious of what the amperage uh, draw was uh, when you're on your panel uh, but it's very very low um, even with all the even with when the lights are not on you're looking at zero it's, it's nothing really so uh, let me flip this thing over and I'll show you what's going on in the back side with as far as the wiring and uh, we'll go from there so here's the back side uh, I've replaced everything on here every wire every connector has been replaced on here with the exception of some original wiring uh, right here in some mixture of uh, number 14 and 16 gauge wire uh, this is the builds live well as and uh, nav lights and those the reason i decided to keep those um well number one the wire is in good shape but also has a special connector uh that i didn't want to replace so i went ahead and kept that all the same and the wiring again is in good good shape i went it did go ahead and replace all of the connectors on the ends though just to make sure that the connectors are good and there was no corrosion and there wasn't so i went ahead and replaced them anyway but the connectors are all good as well as the wiring is good there. But uh, I want it to match what was already on here. And, and again, a combination of 16 gauge as well as 14 gauge. I went with the higher level uh, gauge wiring and I bought um, a whole bunch of uh, uh, wiring from a company called Anchor Marine. And it's a marine grade wiring, uh, copper or tin coated copper. Um, so it's a little stiff, but is very corrosion resistant. Uh, so um, that's what I used on here and the color coding was what matched what was on here before for the most part with the exception of these this yellow and green signal wires which are there's like no voltage on these uh, these signal wires um, I, the colors I chose on those were based on what I found in the back of the book here uh, in the back of the service manual um, this was as close as I could get. I don't have any striped wires, but uh, the yellow and the green, uh, it called for some striping or black and yellow. I can't remember exactly the, the striping, but it did call for some different stripe type wires. I don't have striped wires, so I use what best uh, matches. So uh, second thing was I went ahead and um, as you see here, I've got a lot of connectors um, and I went ahead and uh, connected things. I didn't do a lot of daisy chaining like, like I did here in the lighting. And the reason the lighting is like that is because these are easily, you can easily pull these off. They're not, they're not bolted on, but the wires that were bolted on and onto the, uh, the gauges, I went ahead and the, what was before, it was just basically a bunch of loops all over the place. Um, but I decided to go ahead and split the loops and make these uh, easily swappable. So I could easily, easily, if something goes bad on a gauge, I could easily disconnect them and isolate it and pull the gauge on the boat and swap it out. So it just makes it easy for swapping. So that's why you see a lot of extra connectors only because again, I, I just sort of thinking ahead and said, hey, if I can do that and isolate a switch or isolate a uh, gauge uh, in case something goes bad, that would probably be the best thing. So um, that's why I did that. So on top of that, the connectors uh, that I used for the, the connected to these wires are a uh, tin coated um this is the company here the tin coated brass type of connector uh so they're corrosion resistant as well um so these are the heat shrink tile style connectors as well as the fully insulated style connectors um the fully insulated ones are here again the, the reason they're fully insulated is so that you don't have any exposed um, metal there that's going to pop up or rub up against anything and, and pop a breaker or, or a or a um, fuse and the heat shrink style 
is these down here that I've firmly connected to the um, each each of the gauges, so that it's all over the place here. Uh, the rest of them are just are, are just easily uh, you know um, you can pull these off and uh, swap things out if you need to. So um, and let's see the breakers as I was talking about on the front. Uh, those there uh, in this wiring here down here is thicker because this is going and this is feeding and powering up the um, the live well, the uh, bilge, and the nav light. So these breakers are connected to these switches, and it does need a little bit thicker wiring because those do have a higher amp draw, and uh, that's what I've used. Uh, that's why that's got thicker wiring. This is a number uh, twelve. And then that's, that can just jump her over, and then of course the switch is there. So uh, it's what's on the boat already. So I went ahead and or this this is new, but I, what's on the boat already is a number ten or twelve um, uh, black and red wire. So I just matched that up the best I could. So everything is good to go now. The, the wiring of the switches those were um, not too hard. Uh, the wiring of the switch here, these two here, the, the bilge and the live well switches uh, that. Again, I came from a company called New Wire Marine, and the switches um, are here. And those two switches, the bilge and the live well, were the same as what I had on here before. So the so the swapping those out were, was easy. The jumpers all matched up, the wiring all matched up. That was really simple. However, swapping up, uh, swapping out this this on-off on switch for the nav lights. What was on here before was a seven-post uh, switch, and on the back side with the seven connectors. Uh, but now the new one had a 10 post connector switch um, and that was a, a little bit of, challenge, of a challenge to figure out the, the um, wiring configuration on that. I had to do some creative jumpering there to make everything work the way I needed it to work with the powering up the lighting on the dashboard as well as making sure that the lighting worked properly for the nav lights and um, separating out the uh, when you want everything on, which is the, both together working, uh, the, the front and back uh, lights working, the, the bow and stern, as well as the stern anchor light working by itself when it's in the down position. But I still wanted the dash to light up. So that, that combination of, of making everything work is what was the challenge, trying to figure out the best jumper combination for that. So I did have to swap that, those connectors out several times and do a complete rewire on that several different times to get the right combination. So that was a little bit of a challenge. But we are ready to go. Um, oh, on top of all of the things that I did here with the connectors, I did uh, uh, take some extra precaution uh, and did squirt some of this uh, dielectric grease on every connector on here just to add an extra layer of protection. So um, should this, this whole panel should last uh, many, 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 many years and not have any issues with the wiring. So I think we're good to go. We're gonna ready to put this on the boat and uh, we'll show you what that looks like. All right guys, got everything hooked up. Motor's running, counting hours. Everything looks like it's working fine. Uh, let's see, we got fuel in the starboard tank. I don't have my port tank hooked up, but that's working. Uh, GPS has found a signal, so when it uh, when it doesn't find a signal, it'll, it'll sit there at five miles an hour and jump around a little bit. Um, trim gauge is working. Nav lights are working. We've got our stern light, anchor light up there, as well as the, the bow nav lights are working as well. All the lights in the dash are working. Need to button this thing up, and I think we're done. I tested my bilge, I tested my live well. Those pumps are functioning. Uh, no shortage, shorting, or no uh, resets that I had to do. So everything's good and plugged in, and and functional and working. So I think we have success. And what I'll do here now is I'm going to go ahead and tighten this, uh, you know, tighten up some wires underneath, and uh, screw this back on, and we'll be good to go.